Pew 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 pew. <laughs> Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome back to Tower Defense episode number 17. Now, in this episode, we're going to take our rather boring and mute towers and add a few sound effects and a few trails and so on. Now, there's a few different ways of going about this. So I'm going to try and show you a couple of ways you could approach this. And then we're going to go ahead and create our own sort of simple solution to it. So if we hit stop and we head into our tower module script, and if we find our attack function, we'll see we're actually firing off to fire all clients. And this is a remote event we're sending, which if we find going to start a player and start a player script, we'll find we've got this animations local script. And this was where we were receiving that animate tower event. And then we we're playing animations for each tower. Now, when you're going about creating effects, you really want to do this on the client. So you're not giving the, the server too much to process. So we're going to go on the client and we might as well do it from this animation script because effects are, well, they're kind of animations. Uh, if we wanted, you could name this to client effects or so on to rename it. But, you know, I'm just going to keep it called animations. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to send a extra parameter. So we're sending the tower itself, the name of the animation. And then I'm also going to send, if it's an attack, we'll send the object we're attacking, which in this case is our target. So we'll send that as a third parameter. And then inside our animations local script, we'll need to be expecting that. So we'll be expecting it here as a third parameter. And then we'll add up in a little check. So we'll check We'll play the animation just as before, and then we're going to check if we actually have been given a target, because they don't have to send a target, but if we have been sent one, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create some kind of projectile. So let's create a new function at the top of the script, local function, and we'll call this fire projectile. We could call it fire bullet, but I don't think we've actually got any bullets for our towers. We've just got uh, crossbowmen and so on. So then we can call this fire projectile function. It's going to need two parameters, uh, sort of an A and a B, right? Uh, where it's going from, so like a its origin. We can call this or the the tower, the tower that's being fired from, and the target is heading towards. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new projectile at so local projectile equals instance dot new, and it's just going to be a normal part. And then we're going to need to position it between those two objects, the tower and the target. So in order to do that, we're going to need to get the distance. So the local distance is equal to, and you might remember this from some of our calculations before, we need to get the position of the towers, say head, Get that position and then take away the position of the targets. Let's go for the humanoid root part dot position. And then once that's wrapped in brackets, you can get the dot magnitude of that. And then once we have the distance, we can make a our projectile to be that size. So the projectile dot size is equal to a new vector three value. And we want it just to be 0 0.1 on the X and the Y values, but the Z value, we want that to be equal to that distance variable that we've just created. Next up, we need to position it. So in order to do that, is we don't just want the position, we also want to get its rotation. So we'll use C frame, and we're going to set the C frame equal to C frame dot new. And there's a few different ways you can construct a new C frame, but one way of doing it is giving a starting position. So in this case, tower dot head dot position, and then a second value of something you want to look towards. So we can use this target dot humanoid root part dot position. And once we've got this new C frame, 
we're actually going to want to offset it, although we'll do that in a moment. So we'll just keep this as it is, and then we'll continue setting up some properties for our projectile. So we'll make sure it's anchored. So we'll set that equal to true. Uh, projectile dot can collide. We'll set that equal to false. Uh, the transparency, uh, we could set this to be uh, 0 0.5. And then finally, we'll just give it a parent. So parent. We'll put in the workspace or well, in fact we what we've done with a lot of our pop our sort of visual effects is we put them inside the camera folder so we'll put the workspace dot camera as the parent and then let's just go and test shall we this is actually working for us so we're gonna need to call this function call the fire projectile function from when we receive this remote event so just down here if target then Fire projectile, tower, and target. There we go. So let's click play and see if this how this is looking for us. We'll add in a slinger over here, spawn him in. And what we should see is we have these new parts that are appearing. But if you can see, they are kind of positioned towards the enemy he's shooting at, but it is positioned directly inside of his head. We need to offset it so that it's the, the final point, if you will, is actually positioned at the head and so the midpoint instead of being in his head is in between the value of these these two am i explaining that right you'll you'll see what we do in a minute so let's hit stop and for our c frame uh here it is yep we're going to want to multiply this now by an offset so by a well, let's create a new variable local offset and we'll set this equal to a new c frame c frame dot new and it's going to be zero and zero because we don't want to affect the X and Y. It's just this distance, the, the Z one that we need to change. And we're going to make this equal to uh, a negative distance divided by two. Okay, so we need to take away half of the distance and then it will be centered. And so then what we we'll do is we'll get this C frame and we're just going to multiply that by the offset. So now when I click play, he's going to actually be positioned in the right space. Watch, wait for him to come in. And there we go. We're having these lines now appear perfectly lined up and no weird offsets. Obviously, we need to make these lines disappear. We don't want them just staying forever. Looks a little bit weird. So if we hit stop and let's, uh, let's add in a new service at the top of our script. And this new service is called debris. Local debris equals game get service debris. And then debris service is pretty useful because what you can do is instead of after we've added the projectile, adding some kind of weight and then saying projectile destroy, you can actually just use the debris service. So if I put debris colon add item and then I provide the projectile object and then I just say 0 0.1 say then after 0 0.1 seconds have elapsed it will just destroy it and like it says here it won't yield the code so that's pretty handy so now if i hit play we should hopefully see these lines appearing and disappearing pretty much as soon as they've been added let's see there we go so it actually starts to look a bit like he's firing towards something if we wanted we could sort of change the color and make it look a bit more interesting. And he is firing directly from his face at the moment. Now, one way of improving this would be to add in a config value into the, the tower. And what you could do is add in some kind of like muzzle part so that it fired directly from the weapon. Um, but we're not going to go about in this direction, I don't think. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is because we've just set this up for all of them, if we add in our little melee unit here and we spawn him in, he's actually going to have this, this line created as well. Um, not quite as easy to see, but uh, he is, he is going to be sort of creating this weird bullet trail, which obviously we don't want sort of this weird bullet coming from our melee guy, do we? So what we'll do is we'll hit stop and we're going to add in a, a new value object into each of our towers now. So let's drag our towers. Right, we'll grab them all, move them into the workspace for a second. 
here they all are. So it's only these units that we want to have projectiles, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we'll go into the, the config and we're going to add in a new value object and we're going to a, it'll be a color three value. Okay. And this color three value is going to be called trail. And this is going to be the color of the trail that we're going to fire. So for the slinger, his trail, I think is just going to be white. And then we'll copy this and we can paste this into some of the others. So the archer, what color trail do we want to give him? Uh, how about we give him a sort of a, a slightly yellowish one? Okay, and then the crossbowman into his config. We're going to give him a, I think we'll give him a black trail, fully black. And then for the magician, this is nice and easy. We're going to obviously need to give him a purple one to match his purple staff right there. So we'll set the color to be purple, something, something like that. That'll do. And then our warlock, we'll give him a blue one. And our wizard will give him a, a neon blue. There we go. And then we're not going to give these guys any configs either. Now, once we've done all of that, we're going to need to set up some sounds as well, because we don't want just to have trail effects. We want to have some sound effects too. So we're going to head into each of our units again. And for our slinger, we're going to give him the, I think the classic sort of uh, slingshot sound. So if I head into my toolbox and if I search uh, slingshot audio, let's see if it comes up. Is it this one? Nope. <laughs> you see, this is a problem, isn't it? Trying to find audio, but if we filter them out and we ensure that we're only getting audios of, let's see, about five seconds long we might be able to find one that we can use. So if we sort of search for different things, you can find different audios that you want. Now, thankfully, I've already got some audios that I've found. So here we go. I've got my Slinger sound and I'm going to place it not into the config folder because I want it to be inside an object so that it's actually a 3D spatial sound. So I'm going to place it into the humanoid root part. And if we look inside it, we see there's already a bunch of sounds in here anyway. So I'm going to control shift B, paste that in. And here's my attack sound, a little pinging noise. And we're going to make sure that it's named attack as well. So we know where to find it. So we're going to name all of these attack. And into each of these units, we're going to paste in a sound into the humanoid root part and call it attack. I'll just do this real quick. Okay, there we go. I've just uh, pasted in all of my updates. And if we see, if we go on the, our caveman brute here, for instance, and we look in his humanoid root part, he's got an attack sound. We can play that. There we go, club sound. And our, our wizard here, our warlock, in fact, in his humanoid root part, he's got a sound called attack again, and we can play that. There we go, a little zap sound. So we've got all our sounds lined up, and we've also got all of those config values with a trail color set up as well. Fantastic. So once we've done all of that, we can move all of these towers back into our, our replicated storage. And now we just need to set about scripting them. So if we head into our animations script one more time, and we're gonna change this a little bit now. So we don't want to just draw a straight line anymore. I think what'd be nicer is if we sort of animated a part moving across. So we're actually going to remove this stuff where we set the, the, the distance and the, the offset and the C frame and all this kind of stuff. We're going to delete all of that. And instead we're going to make the projectile dot size equal to vector three dot new. And we'll just make it 0 0.1 in every direction. And then for its position, or C frame, we're just going to set this equal to be the tower's head. So projectile.c frame equals tower.head.c frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to use something called tween service. So if we go to the top and add in a new variable for our service, local tween service, 
equals game get service tween service. And once we've done that, we can then use this down here. After we've parented it, we're going to say local uh, bullet tween or projectile tween, I suppose. Projectile tween will equal tween service and we call the create function. And this takes a few parameters, the first of which is the object we want to tween. So this will be the projectile. The next is the tween info. So tween service is just a way of transitioning between two values. And there's loads of different properties you can adjust with tween info dot new, and you can create a bunch of different easing styles and so on. Uh, but we're not going to bother with all of that today. We're just going to create a very basic linear tween. And to do that, we can just say tween info dot new, and we'll just make it last half a second. Okay, very basic tween. And then we need to set the, the property that we want to tween. So to do that, it's a property table. We can see that the prompt is telling us. So we're going to need to use these curly brackets like so, these curly ones. And inside of here, we're going to say position, uppercase P, equals and the position we want to move towards, which in this case is going to be the, the target. So the equals target dot humanoid root part dot position. Okay. So there we go. That's our completed line right there. So that's created the projectile tween. And then just like an animation or an audio file, we then need to tell that animation we've created to play. So new line and we'll say projectile tween colon play. And once we've done that, uh, oh, since we made it last half a second, let's make sure we don't destroy it until half a second is up. So let's go and play and see how our new projectile is looking. We'll add in a sling over here, upgrade him. And what we should see is a part moving towards it. It's very quick. In fact, let's hit stop and we'll just make this equal to uh, one stood in every direction, just so we can see it a little bit easier. Now, if we add this guy in, we should be able to see it a bit better. There we go. He's flinging a block towards him. And we've got this sort of shooting thing going on. I think that looks pretty cool. But it's a little bit lackluster just having a single block, isn't it? So what you might want to do here is add in some particle effects. Now you can spend all day messing around with particle effects. So we're going to be a little bit lazy and we're just going to use the good old classic uh, fire instance. All right. So if we go down here and we'll create a local fire equals instance dot new fire. And then we'll say the fire dot size we'll set that equal to two the fire dot heat we'll set that equal to i think the smallest is 0 0.1 and then the fire dot color and this is where those color values we put placed earlier that's where they come in so we can say tower dot config dot uh what was it called trail dot value and then finally we just parent that that new fire object to be inside of the projectile and once we've done this we can then hit play and we should see a little flame now with our slinger dude let's place him over here upgrade him and there we go we can see some yellow flame is coming right behind the object I think that looks pretty cool in fact we probably don't want to even be able to see that uh, that grayish part we created anymore either so if you wanted you could set the the parts color um, to the, the trail value as well, but I think we're just going to set it to one so it's fully transparent. And so now we should have something that looks like this for our crossbowman, it's a little black trail for our basic slinger, it should be a white one. There we go. And then if we add in our, our brute over here, if anyone gets down here, there should be no trail at all. Oh, and we've got a error. What's going on here? Trail is not a valid member of configuration. So we'll have to hit stop, won't we? And if we go into our animation script, scroll down. And if we see, we're actually 
always calling this function, which is not what we want to do, is it? We want to check if they have the trail value. So inside of here, we'll add another if condition. If the tower dot config, and we use the find first child function. So we'll look to check if it contains the trail object. And if it does, then, and only then, do we want to fire the projectile. And if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. So then we'll click play, and that should hopefully get rid of our error there. Let's add in our, our boot right on the border there. And there we go, no error. And if we were adding a wizard, he should hopefully uh, fire a trail. There we go, a purple trail, which just fired off. If we upgrade him, we should be getting a blue one in a second. There we go, a blue trail's been fired across. And we can get our slinger as well. The next thing we need to do is adding in those sounds. And that's super easy. All we need to do, hit stop, head back into that animations. And we could either do this just below, and it'll be tower dot humanoid root part dot attack, which is the name of the sound we added into all of them, and play. Now, if some of your towers don't have an attack sound, then you'd want to use the find first child to check. But seeing as I've added in this attack sound into all of them, I know it's there, so I can just tell it to play. So if I go ahead and click play myself and test these out one more time, I should hear some sound effects now. Let's have a listen. There we go, cool. And if I upgrade him, I've not got a new sound. If I upgrade him one more time, I've now got this crossbow sound, which sounds suspiciously like a firearm, but it'll work for our purposes. We'll add in our, our brute over here. We've got a club sound. And if we upgrade him, we've now got the sword sound. And our wizard, we've got a wizardy zap sound. There we go. So we no longer need to imagine the sound effects. We've got some sound effects of our own. That's much better, isn't it? One more thing that we could maybe add would be to have some sounds actually happening sort of in the game itself. So if we hit stop and come out back into the, the main workspace and we'll select our grassland map inside of here, let's add in an audio file. So we could have some different music for each map. So again, if you go to the toolbox and you could search say for some like adventure music perhaps, and then you just filter. So you'd check to say, look for, look for lots, say that are over sort of three minutes ish. And then you could add in something, add in a sound or so on the big, make sure that they're created by Roblox. Otherwise these are going to be uh, pirated pretty soon with a new update, unfortunately. Um, but there's lots of ones from Roblox to choose from. And I already found this one earlier, so I'm going to paste this one in called The Big Adventure. And we can give this a little listen very quickly. Wonderful stuff. I'm going to set keep the volume at 0.1 because we only want it to be in the background. And we'll make sure that playing is enabled and that looped is enabled as well. So both of these are ticked. And now when I hit play and I just join the game, I'm going to hear that background music just gently playing. And then I've got all my sound effects for each of my units as well. And there we go. Our game is suddenly a lot more lively. It's no more boring, mute experience, but a an epic adventure to defend this admittedly rather boring map. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you found this video helpful and we're flying through our tower defense series. I think in the next episode, it is going to be time to start working on some of our maps and maybe make some multi map system. So thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and why not even consider subscribing until next time. Goodbye.